Now here is a very popular question from the exam. And the exam will ask you about deployment modes for Elastic Beanstalk and which deployment mode is better for which situation. So I want you to understand each and every option for Elastic Beanstalk deployments because that's really key to answering these questions the right way. We've seen the single instance deployment and this is great for development because we basically get one EC2 instance with one Elastic IP and one auto scaling group and maybe we talk to a database all of this is in one AZ and so it's very easy to reason about and the DNS name maps straight to the Elastic IP. There's a second setup now which is the high availability with load balancer or without a load balancer and it's great for production type of deployments. So in this case it's a bit more complicated but we've seen this architecture before. We have an auto scaling group or ASG and it will span across multiple availability zones in which in each AZ we're going to get several one or several EC2 instances, each with their own security groups, and they may talk to an RDS, maybe set up in multi-AZ as well, such as one master and one uh, standby database. Okay, so all this is pretty familiar. And then the Elastic Load Balancer will talk directly to the ASG and will connect to all the EC2 instances. And that ELB will expose a DNS name, which will be wrapped by the Elastic Beanstalk DNS name. So this is what we've seen, kind of dev and prod. And obviously you can customize this a little bit. But what happens when you want to update these deployments, okay? There's four different kind of, four or five different kind of deployments and you need to know them all. The first one is called All At Once, where you deploy all your applications in one go. Now, don't worry, I have graphs describing in depth all of these. I just want to give you a quick overview. So with it all at once, it's the fastest kind of deployments, but instances won't be available to serve traffic for a bit. So you'll get downtime. If you go into a rolling update, then it will update a few instances at a time, also called a bucket, and then move on to the next bucket once the first bucket is healthy and updated. You get a slight twist on this called rolling with additional batches. And this is like rolling, but you spin up new instances to move the batch, such as your application is still available and always applicating, um, operating at full capacity. And finally, you'll get immutable deployments where you spin up new instances in a new ASG and you deploy the version updates to these instances. And then when everything is ready, we'll swap out the whole ASG when everything is healthy. So this is a little bit you know, high level and you probably have no idea what these means. So this is why I wanted to take my time and really show you with graphs and diagrams how these work. So let's talk about all at once. Here is our four EC2 instances and they all run the version one, which is blue, okay, of our application. Then we are going to do an all at once deployment. So we want to deploy V2. And what happens that first Elastic Beanstalk will just stop the applications on all our EC2 instances. So then I'll put it as gray as in they don't run anything. And then we will be running the new V2 because Elastic Beanstalk will deploy V2 to these instances. So what do we notice? Well, it's very quick. It's the fastest deployment. The application though has downtime because you can see in the middle, they're all gray and so they can't serve any traffic. It's, I think it's great for when you have uh, quick iterations and development environments, when you want to deploy your code fast and quickly and you don't really care about downtime. And finally, with this setup, there is no additional cost. Now let's talk about rolling. The application will basically be running below capacity and we can set how much below we want to set, uh, like run under capacity, so it's called the bucket size. And so let's have a look. We have four instances running V1 and the bucket size will be two for this example. So what happens is that the first two instances will be stopped, not instances, so the application on the instances will be stopped and so they're gray, but we still have the other two instances running V1. So you can see we have maybe half capacity here. Then these first two instances will be updated so they will be running V2 and then we will roll on to the next bucket or to the next batch. And so that's why it's called rolling. As you can see now, the bottom two instances will have their application V1 taken down to some gray and then updated to V2. And so at the end, we have all the EC2 instances that have been updated to run the V2 application code. So as you can see now, the application at some point during the deployment is running both versions simultaneously. And there is no additional cost, okay? You still have the same number of EC2 instances running in your infrastructure.
And so if you set a very small bucket size and you have hundreds and hundreds of instances, it may be a very long deployment, okay? Right now in this example, we have a bucket size of two and four instances, but we can have you know a bucket size of two and 100 instances. It will just take a very long time to upgrade everything. Now there's an additional mode called rolling with additional batches. And so in this case, the application is not running under capacity, just like before. Before, you know, at some point, we were only running two instances out of four, so that was below capacity. In this mode, we run at capacity, and we can also set the bucket size. And basically, our application will still be running both versions simultaneously, but at a small additional cost. That additional batch that we'll see in a second will be removed at the end of the deployment. And again, the deployment is going to be long. It's honestly a good way to deal with prod. So let's have a look. We have our four V1 EC2 instances. And the first thing we're going to do is deploy new EC2 instances and they will have the V2 version on it. So now from four instances, Elastic Beanstalk automatically created six instances for us. So an additional two. And you can see that the additional two are running already the newer version. Now we take the first batch to so the first bucket of two and they get stopped, the application gets stopped and the application gets updated to v2. Excellent. Then the process repeats again, just like in rolling. So the application running v1 gets stopped, and then the application is updated to v2. And so at the end, you can see we have six EC2 instances running v2. And so at the end of it, the additional batch gets terminated and taken away. So what would you do this? Well, now we can see that we are running always at capacity the lowest number of EC2 instances running the application we have at any time is four. So sometimes we are running at over capacity, obviously, and this is why you have a small additional cost. It's very small, but there's an additional cost, and sometimes the exam asks you, is there an additional cost to this kind of stuff? Then we have immutable type of deployments, and these deployments are also zero downtime. But this time, the new code is going to be deployed to new instances. So before it was on previous instances, now it's deployed on new instances. And where do these instances come from? Well, they come from a temporary ASG. So there's a high cost, you double the capacity because you get a full new ASG, and it's the longest kind of deployment. As a bonus, though, you get a very quick rollback in case of failures because to just mitigate failure, you just have to terminate, and not you, but Elastic Beanstalk, will just terminate the new ASG. So it's a great choice for prod if you're willing to take a little bit more cost. So here's the idea. We have a current ASG with three applications V1 running on three instances. And then we're going to have a new temporary ASG being created. At first, Beanstalk will launch one of instance on it just to make sure that one works. And if it works and it passes the health checks, it's going to launch all the remaining ones. So right now, three instances. When it's happy, it's going to merge, sort of merge the, the ASG with the temporary ASG. So it's going to move all the temporary ASG instances to the current ASG. So now in the current ASG, we have six instances, okay? And when all of this is done and the temporary ASG is empty, then we have the current ASG that will terminate all the V1 applications while the V2 applications are still there. And then finally, the temporary ASG will just be removed. Finally, there's something you may hear in the exam or in the white papers, it's called blue-green, and it's not a direct feature of Elastic Beanstalk, but I'll try to give you my best version of it. It's basically a zero downtime and it helps with the release facility, allows for more testing, etc., etc. And so the idea is that you want to deploy a new stage environment, so it's just an, another Elastic Beanstalk environment, and you'll deploy your new V2 there. So before all the deployment strategies were within the same environment, here we create a new environment, and so the new environment, stage or green, can be validated independently in our own time and then roll back if issues. And then we can use something like Route 53, for example, to uh, prevent uh, the traffic from going into the two directions. So we can set up weighted policies and redirect a little bit of traffic to the stage environment so we can test everything. And then when we're happy using the Elastic Beanstalk console, you can swap URLs when done with the test environment. So this is not a very direct feature and it's actually very manual to do. It's not like embedded into Elastic Beanstalk. So some documentation will say there's blue green, some will say it's not there, but overall it's very manual. So just one graph, I try to make it simple, but in the blue environment running into one Elastic Beanstalk environment, we have all the V1 
and then we'll deploy a green environment with all the v2 okay and they're both running at the same time just very fine and then in route tc3 we're going to set up a weighted uh, type of policy to send 90 percent of the traffic to blue so just keep most of the traffic going to the instances we know work and maybe only 10 percent of the traffic to the green environment just to test it out and make sure it's working and the users aren't having any problems and so the web traffic basically gets split, you know, 90, 10, but it's whatever you want as far as the weight goes. And so when you're happy with your testing, when you measured everything you want with your V2 environment and you think you got it, then you basically shut down the blue environment and swap the URL to make the green be the main environment. So that's it for blue green, right? And it's pretty complicated and I think pretty manual and elastic beanstalk, but that's the way it is. Now, from the AWS documentation, sometimes it's really good and we get a little summary. So this is the link if you look into it. It's really, really good. I actually like that page. You should read it. And so there's this table, which is quite nice, which kind of summarizes all the deployment options. And so you have all at once, rolling, rolling with additional batch, immutable. So all these we've been doing in depth and blue green as well. And so it basically tells you what happens if there's a failed deployment, what's the deployment time, is there a zero downtime or not, is there a DNS change, what's the rollback process, and where does the code get deployed to. So this table should make a ton of sense to you if my diagrams made sense to you as well, right? But now you should really understand all the differences between the deployment methods. They're very important and the exam asks you a lot of questions around which is better depending on the use case and the requirements. So I hope that was helpful. And now you're a deployment expert on Elastic Beanstalk, and I will see you in the next lecture.